everybody, welcome back to Mentor and yet another video podcast with me. It's great to see you all back again. Um, to all you new joiners to the channel, very, very welcome. I uh, hope you're liking what you see and uh, I hope, so hope that you will enjoy the coming videos that I'm about to shoot later on. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about the maintenance schedule that our aircraft goes through. What we as pilots are allowed to do and what we're absolutely not allowed to do and also about our unsung heroes, the uh, flight engineers and the um, mechanics that are keeping us flying and keeping us operating every day. They are truly, truly wizards at what they do. I am blessed to fly in an airline who has very, very skilled engineers employed and uh, no matter what vague technical failure descriptions we put into our technical logbooks they tend to be able to fix it very very rapidly um, it's it's a it's an honor to work around these people and i am truly truly impressed of the work that they do every day so some of my friends have asked me you know i have a car it breaks down now and then how come that you can put yourself in an a machine that's sitting at 39 40,000 feet why what if it breaks well that's why I want to talk a little bit about the maintenance schedule here because believe you me if your car would be maintained to the same standard and in the same way as an aircraft would be it's very very unlikely that you ever would have a catastrophic failure to your car um, so what kind of checks does an aircraft go through well First of all, we have within every 48 hours, you have to have done a daily inspection of the aircraft. Um, a daily inspection is normally done by a licensed engineer, but it can be done on occasion by a pilot as well under the instruction of a licensed engineer. Um, if you would, for example, be stuck at an outstation where there are no engineers available, then you are allowed to do this very simple check, which is comprising of basically checking lights um, having a thorough over, overview of the aircraft um, and I'm not going to go into the specifics of it because honestly uh, I need an engineer to tell me what to do so it's as easy as that we leave these kind of things up to the engineers um, so every 48 hours we have this daily inspection done it has to be put into our logbook that has been done and it's one of the things that I check every day when I uh, open up my technical log then we go into the more serious maintenance check. So every 250 hours, which is about 200 to 300 cycles, an aircraft has to go through what's called an A-check. An A-check uh, is part of the Continued Airworthiness Maintenance Program, which is uh, controlled by EASA when you work for a European airline. And an A-check takes about 20 to 50 man hours to do and can be done by the, <coughs> the gate. So there's no need to bring an aircraft into a hangar to do an A-check, it can be done where it's standing. So it's a smaller check, but it's still uh, significantly more than what you would do during a, um, a daily inspection. So then every six months, um, we have the aircraft has to go through what's called a B-check, which is a slightly more um, serious check. It has to be done in a hangar, it takes about 150 to 200 man hours to do. Uh, so it means that the aircraft will spend about one to three days in the hangar doing this check. Then, every 20 to 24 months, so every two years or so, um, the aircraft goes through a more heavy maintenance check, which is called a C-check. A C-check is significantly more, um, entails significantly more items than a B-check. It takes about 6,000 man-hours to do, which means the aircraft is parked up in a hangar for about one to two weeks and it requires some of the larger components to be um, taken off the aircraft for inspection. Um, then every six years the aircraft goes through a heavy maintenance check, uh, a D check. The D check is basically taking the aircraft down to its bare components, x-raying everything, making sure that there's no cracks in any of the bearing structures, making sure that all of the um, vital components are working and changing most of the stuff that should be changed. Now a D-check take, takes about 50,000 man hours to do. So it's about two months in a hangar um, with people working around the clock to get the aircraft back in traffic again. 
In some cases, you even have to scrub off all the paint of the aircraft in order to be able to examine the skin for cracks and things like that. So we're talking very, very heavy maintenance here. Um, an aircraft goes through on average between two and three of these D-checks before it's scrapped because a D-check costs well north of one million dollars to do. So those are the, the general, the normal checks. And on top of that, you have every time that anything happens to the aircraft, uh, you have some checks being put in. So let's say the aircraft, for example, um, flies into a bird or a bird gets sucked into the engine. Then if the a bird goes through the engine core, we have to do something that's called a boroscope where the engineers goes in with a kind, tiny little camera and look for any internal damage. Uh, any dent from a bird, from hail, from anything really has to be inspected and it has to be measured and depending on the size of it, it has to be fixed. It might mean that you have to, uh, have to change the whole leading edge of a wing or um, flap component, but nothing is left unchecked, basically. So uh, if you would do this to your car, basically what it would mean, if you put this in context, it would mean that every time that you sit down into your car, uh, it would have needed to have done a daily inspection first, where a licensed engineer would have walked around the car, making sure that all of the normal lights and all of the, the components, everything looks okay, that the oil, oil is okay, um, that the filters are checked and so on. Basically what you do when you do a small service on your car every 48 hours. And then um, every uh, same month, then uh, the your car will be taken offline and it will be checked by a mechanic in, outside on the street maybe, but, but he would look in under your car and check your exhaust pipes and everything. Then every six months, it will be taken into a garage and uh, some components will be taken off and changed. And then every two years, it will be taken down into its bare components and changed everything that has even the smallest malfunction or anything that even looks like it might become a malfunction later on. And then every six years, I mean, most of you guys would have cars that are older than six years. Every six years, you will basically get a brand new car. <clears throat> That's exactly what a D-check would be. They will go through everything, including repainting your car, um, looking through that every little dent that you have is fixed. And it would also, which most airlines do, change the interior. So they, most airlines would use the D-check to, for example, upgrade the uh, in-flight entertainment system. So... In the case of your car, that would be that they would change the upholstery completely, put in a new GPS, put in a new radio, a new steering wheel and everything. Plus that the car is now freshly painted and has changed its engine and uh, exhaust system and every little speck of rust would have been removed. So if you put yourself into that situation, uh, it's very unlikely that your car would ever suffer any major malfunction on the road. So then um, we come to what we as pilots are allowed to do and not to do when it comes to maintenance. Basically, to make this as simple as possible, a pilot does not fix anything on an aircraft, ever. The only thing a pilot is allowed to do is to see that there is damage and report it. Okay. Uh, we are trained to handle things in flight. Something happens, a light comes on, a warning comes on, we interpret the warning, we read the checklist, we make sure that any redundant system gets uh, connected to the system and we get the aircraft safely down on the ground. That's what we are trained to do. We're also trained to do this walk around that we do before every flight, but that is to look for damage. If we do actually find any damage, we have to contact our maintenance control center and they have to send an engineer to assess that damage. In a very few circumstances, um, we might have systems, redundant systems, which are not working. Uh, if they're not, we contact our maintenance control unit. We tell them what system is not working. They will then, together with us, look into what's called minimum equipment list, or MEL, and determine whether or not it's needed for flight. And if we can actually fly back with it, it means that it's a redundant system, so we have another backup system taking care of it then we can put it into the tech log to make sure that when we get back to a manned station, an engineer will have a look at it and rectify the problem. 
So any time that you've been sitting in an aircraft and the pilot has announced that due to a technical uh, problem we have to wait, it's because we have to wait for our engineers to come and sort it out. We are not allowed to fix anything. Any dent, even the smallest little dent that we find has to be assessed by an engineer. So every time that I do my walk around, if I find little dents, which you know they can be allowed, I go in, I open my technical logbook, I look in the technical logbook to see if that dent has been entered into a damage chart that we have. And if it's not there, I'm not allowed to take off. It has to be assessed by an engineer. So that's it really. Uh, pilots fly the aircraft, engineers make sure that the aircraft can fly safely. And that's the roles that we have. And uh, they are work working great. Um, as I said in the beginning of the podcast, I am truly amazed them, uh, about the job they do. You'd be surprised on how quickly they can sort out a problem that you would think would take weeks to fix. So that's it. That's what I wanted to cover this podcast. Um, keep sending in questions. If you have more questions about technical things, then please send it in. And I'll try to uh, answer it to the best of my capability for now. Over and out, have a great evening and I'll see you next time.